and make sure the head is the end that's traveling free and easy and the grip actually needs, needs to stay quiet. I don't want the handle moving back and forth. Hello and welcome to me and my golf. We're your coaches Andy and Pierce and we're here at the PGA Demo Day here joined by PGA Tour coach Stan Utley. Stan? Good to meet you Stan. Great thanks, to have you here on the show. On your show. No problem. So it's going to be great to talk about short game with you Stan. You work with a lot of the best players in the world and specifically on their short game. Um, we'd like to talk a little bit about the mistakes that you see these guys make uh, and then maybe some some simple things that the viewers at home can maybe take from this that they could go and work on to help their short game, especially, especially with the pitching, the shorter shots maybe. Well, I think personally I'm always paying attention to sequence and sometimes people don't know what that means but particularly working with a good player most often their swing is awesome and they kind of get the parts moving out of order you know and what I mean by that is it, it would be easy to have the handle going too fast or you know maybe the release is too early but usually that's not the case but for me to working with a good player I'm just getting their their swing synced up maybe working on their balance making sure that they use the bounce on their wedge I mean, it's funny how some people uh, they don't pay attention to, we, we go to the store, we buy a wedge, I got my new Ping Glide 2.0, it's got angle on the bottom of it and it's got width. Well, if you have the shaft forward more than the angle on the bottom, it's useless. So a tour player, sometimes I can see them being stuck because they're, they haven't found the bounce like they do when they're on. And the, I'm just tuning those guys up. The average guy, it's a little different story. Okay, so what, with the average guy, what sort of things are we seeing? Can we just sort of stand over here and you can demonstrate what sort of things we're seeing with the average golfer? So, I always ask my average guy that's coming and, and he's really struggling, I say, if, if you think you're supposed to release a chip shot or a pitch shot, I say, do you think you're releasing too early or too late? And they usually think too early when in fact, I think most problems come from the fact that they accelerate the grip too great in the downswing and then the club gets late and then at the last minute they flip. But if I could get them to just swing kind of in sequence and make sure the head is the end that's traveling free and easy and the grip actually needs to stay quiet. I don't want the handle moving back and forth. You see when I do that the club head doesn't go anywhere. And that's why the average person I believe has so much trouble. And what goes together with being in sequence is off actually using the ground and using your pivot and extension with your body. So most bad chippers that I see, they're always dipping. Yeah. Well, they're dipping because when they start out, if you measure from your chest to the club head and then you push the grip through, see the club head just got short. Yeah. So if they didn't dip, they would whiff every time. And then they chunk and skull because they can't time the dip. So I spend a lot of time getting them to learn to let the club swing free at the bottom, but use your body and your extension of your body to find the bottom consistently. And there'll be a lot of guys watching that move, that move yes. that Stan's demonstrating now, thinking we've been told not to do that. We've got to keep that shaft leaning forward and accelerate through the, the golf shot. And it's not the case though, is it? And for me, you know, the, the bottom of the club has this angle to it. And if you pull the shaft forward, now you only have lead edge. So you wonder why you dig into the ground. A good player who uses the bottom of the club, his club is always skipping the turf. He's not digging in the ground because he lets the shaft return back so that the, the back of his wedge is still skidding the ground. Now I have angle, but I, use, I create my angle by keeping my body forward. I do not create angle by leaning back and pushing my hands forward. That's what's wrong. And when you get that interaction with the ground, which is so much shallower, you know, you've got a lot more sort of forgiveness in where you can contact that shot, haven't you? As soon as you get that shaft leaning forward and the leading edge coming in, you've got to be precise on your contact to get a good shot. One of my favorite questions is, is there more room for error when you're coming in steep or shallow? And if you're coming in steep, the bottom of the swing is narrow. If you're coming in shallow, the bottom of your swing has some width to it. My misses turn out not too bad. And that's really our objective in golf. I had a person ask me one time uh, how to get better. And he really explained that my good is right here and it's probably not gonna move because I've already chipped in once. My bad's over here. I'm trying to get my bad to move this way a little bit so the center looks different. And learning to use the bounce and release your club right is, is what allows you to have your bad ones turn out not so bad. Okay, so we're here on the orange whip stand, obviously, and we have a little uh, 
training aid that you've helped develop with the guys here at Orange Whip, and we obviously love the Orange Whip. How does this work, and how what will people what pe what can people learn from this? Well, kind of the story from here was I've loved the Orange Whip, and then I got an Orange Whip putter, and I used it for putting, and I kept saying if I had this tool with a wedge on the end of it. I think I could really have people create feels that I, my words aren't maybe always getting across. And so literally we took an orange whip wedge or orange whip putter and put a wedge head on it. Now we've actually developed a head for this shaft. And because the shaft is heavy and, and soft and I've got a counterbalance on this end, I can actually hit shots with this and begin to feel the load and unload of the shaft. So it's good for rhythm. But it has me understand, you see, if I accelerate the grip, the shaft is bent like this, it's back loaded at the ball. And the truth is, when you hit a full shot, the shaft is, is forward kicked at the ball if you're fit correctly. And most people don't even know that. So it's not that my grip isn't pointed forward, but the sh my grip's pointed this way to put pressure on the ball, but I'm letting the shaft release. And to do this correctly, you actually almost need to stop this end. It's like, it's like fly fishing. If, if I'm fly fishing and I'm gonna let the end of my rod tip fly, I've gotta stop this hand. If I keep pushing on this hand, it keeps loading backwards. It's a sequence, as you say, it's like accelerating yeah, and decelerating. See people struggling and to take this wedge and, and to be able to hit real live shots with it, uh, my, my students are catching on quickly a feel that my words you know, sometimes struggle to get them to feel. Uh, the thing most surprising is I've been using this for a while. My good players, when they hit a few shots with this and go back to their wedge, it feels easier. So I, I thought it was going to help my bad player. My good player actually likes practicing with it as well. So you talk about obviously getting that release a little bit better and you also mentioned about this sort of pivot and getting this extension through the ball. Can you talk about and demonstrate that for us? So. I feel like when we go back and the club's kind of on plane, I want to let the shaft line back up with my left arm in a downward motion so the release is really down and back. I feel like I get to the ball because I'm going to pivot into the ball. You see the club face came around square. The extension and the vertical push helps with the downward the downward release. So when I go up, the club goes down. If I go down, you see the grip goes down and the head goes up. So it's just a combination of standing tall and going around the corner to get the club out to the ball. And then all of a sudden you're landing the bounce or the back of the club, which I like to call my skid plate. You're landing it clean in the turf and you don't have to hit the ball precisely. When you're saying it's going around the corner, that is literally feeling the club just going swinging around more. So, so I'm, I'm delivering the club down. Yeah. My pivot brings it around and through. And I, I, I was taught by a gentleman named uh, Brian, I, I lost the name, Brian England. He was a Scottish guy uh, that was at the University of Missouri when I was in college. He, he f insisted that I finish low and short with my wedge shots. So the fact is, I'm just delivering the club down and stopping, and I got that wrong, Brian Allen. I went back in my memory bank. It's been a long time ago since I was in college. But Brian would insist that I finish low and short with the club head and have extension with my body. And I think our, our amateur, because his instinct says get the ball in the air, he's swinging up with his arms and down with his body, and that's not what the best players do. You can really hear that club as you're making contact here. You can hear it sort of hear it bounce and slide along the turf, and there's that margin for error, that wide sort of uh, bottom to that swing, which is really key for that consistency of strike. And, and and I'm swinging at the turf more than I'm swinging at the ball. Yeah, yeah. I think our student gets struggled because they swing at the ball. I'm just landing my club in the turf. It skids the turf, and the the club face already aims up. We can't keep it from going up if we hit the ground. There we go, I like that. that. Swinging the club at the turf as opposed to swinging the club at the ball. I think we'll be using that one maybe a bit more. I think the thing with this as well is that it's so, for a lot of people looking at this, Andy, they'll see this and they'll think, you know, doing, you know, I'm throwing the club in. They're, 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 that's what they're going to be thinking though. They're going right. to be thinking this and they're going to be thinking standing up. The thing is, you just got to, you know, go back through what Stan has said there and just understand that it's allowing the club head 
to get that working. You know, a lot of people, as you say, focus on driving that handle, don't they? And it's interesting, if it's me keeping the grip still, it's what loads and unloads it. If I start moving, it starts backloading, or if I start trying to do it with my wrist, it doesn't really load and unload. So keeping the top end more quiet, yeah. letting your body bring the club around is gonna make it freer. And the one thing we will say about Stan, you should definitely listen to me because you've, you've got a record at the moment which was still existing for when you were playing on tour. What was that record quickly? So I, I, I was able to get around nine holes yep. with six putts. And, and I admit that's not playing my best golf, but that's playing, uh, that's taking advantage of my scoring abilities. Yes, taking advantage of these, that's taking right. advantage of these. <laughs> Guys, there's a lot of information there, but I think if you actually go through that, you'll understand that you know, it, you know, the short game is such an important part of the game, and Stan is a, a master of this. So definitely listen to what he's saying and start using this club properly. I think is the key, isn't it? Start using the back of that club, the whole of that club. For more information on the Orange Whip, make sure you check out the Orange Whip website down in the link below. Maybe test out one of these uh, beauties soon. Thanks for your time, Stan. Today, Thanks. Thanks really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Post any comments down below, guys, as well, and we'll speak to you next time.